Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, Case 91. This is an axial T2 fat sat image through the hip, showing an important finding. And the high yield question is, what's the most likely diagnosis? Is this a case of a quadratus femoris tear, a hamstring injury, trochanteric bursitis, or ischiofemoral impingement? What's the most likely diagnosis? Well, if you take a look here, first of all, this is part of the femur here. This is the lesser trochanter here. This is, of course, the inferior pubic ramus. These two tendons are the hamstring tendons here. This is the uh, the, the more anterior lateral one is the semimembranosus, and the one that's more posterior medial is a conjoint tendon of the semitendinosus and the biceps femoris. And we have a little bit of fluid in the joint capsule. That's okay. But the dominant finding here is, is that there's a little bit of intramuscular edema within this muscle here. This is the quadratus femoris muscle. And there's intramuscular edema here. And this distance between the lesser trochanter and the ischial tuberosity, this here is the ischial tuberosity, is decreased compared to a normal individual, right? So the best answer here is, of course, ischiofemoral impingement. This occurs when there's a decreased distance between the lesser trochanter and the ischial tuberosity, and you can often get edema or even atrophy of this quadratus femoris muscle. So, of course, the best answer here is going to be ischiofemoral impingement. Trochanteric bursitis would be fluid deep to the gluteus maximus tendon and muscle. We don't see that here. A hamstring injury would be injury, tendinopathy, or partial tearing of these tendons here. We don't have that here. There may be some minimal intrasubstance signal here, maybe some degeneration. At max, you would call it tendinopathy, but certainly no tear. And the quadratus femoris, not really a tear, just a little bit of edema here along the medial aspect of the muscle, not quite you know, feathery enough or diffuse enough to call a tear of the actual muscle or tendon. So the best answer here is ischiofemoral impingement. This is a really important diagnosis that doesn't get talked about a lot. This is when there's painful compression of the quadratus femoris between the lesser trochanter of the femur and the ischial tuberosity. And this space is often decreased, this ischiofemoral space, the space that we're talking about here between the lesser trochanter and the ischial tuberosity. Normally, this is about 23 millimeters, you know, plus or minus eight millimeters, but it's abnormal when it's at the level of around 13 millimeters, right? Plus or minus three millimeters. You can actually make that measurement in real time when you're reading an MRI. Now, there are many causes of ischiofemoral impingement, most of which are related to movement, positional, and acquired. But ultimately, anything that decreases that space, that ischiofemoral space, is going to result in this. So this could be patients that are internally rotating, abducting, or adducting their hip with time. This can result in ischiofemoral impingement. You know, things like a larger cross-sectional area of the femur, when the lesser trochanter is too medial or the ischium is too inferior, that's all going to decrease that space that we're talking about and result in ischiofemoral impingement. And also, this can be acquired from fractures that result in decrease in the space. Osteoarthritis, of course, when you get superior medial migration of the femoral head, this can alter the weight-bearing mechanics and decrease the space, ultimately resulting in ischiofemoral impingement. So on imaging, what we're really looking for is this decreased space, right? Again, 13 millimeters ischiofemoral space. Often we'll get edema or atrophy of the quadratus femoris muscle, and you may get reactive bony changes in both the ischial tuberosity or the lesser trochanter. So, you know, that in a nutshell is what we talk about when we talk about ischiofemoral impingement. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another high-yield MSK unknown case.